honorable and perfectly self-enlightened worshippers Buddha, consummated in knowledge and behavior. Hello to you, friends. This is Dhamma on Air number 135, the fifth in a series of Dhamma conversations with Bante Dhamma Gavesi from Sri Lanka and UK on all aspects of the Dhamma, including the Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Way. Thank you. Friends, the Four Noble Truths, Tudzariya, Arya Satyani, which is the very core of Buddhism, are one, all this and such is suffering, dukkha. Two, craving is the cause of suffering, dukkha samadaya. Three, absence of all craving is the end of all suffering, dukkha niruddha. Four, the noble eightfold way leads to the end of suffering. This noble hateful way which leads to Nibbana is simply this. Right you, Samaditi. Right motivation, Samma Sankappa. Right speech, Samma Vajja. Right action, Samma Kamanda. Right livelihood, Samma Ajiva, right effort, Samma Vajjava, right awareness, Samma Sati, and right concentration, Samma Samadhi. But what is right action, Samma Kamanta? What is this essential right action? Right action is threefold. 1. Avoiding all killing and any form of harming or violence towards any form of living being. 2. Abstaining from all taking and thus stealing whatever is not given. 3. Stopping all adultery and any sexual abuse of illegitimate partners. That is right action. On the characterization of right action, the Blessed Buddha said, Friends, it is caused by behavior in conflict with the Dhamma, caused by immoral behavior, that some beings here, right at the breakup of the body, right after death, reappear lost in states of pain, in unhappy destinations, in the downfall dimensions, even in the hills. And it is caused by good behavior, in harmony with the Dhamma, caused by good moral behavior, that some beings here, on the break off of the body, right after death, reappear in a happy destination, even in the divine world. And which are the three kinds of bodily moral behavior that are in good harmony with the Dhamma? One, here one stops all killing of any living being, and one abstains from injuring any living being with weapon and stick laid aside, gentle and kind, such good one dwells in harmless sympathy towards all beings. 2. Avoiding the taking of what is not given. One refrains from all stealing what is not openly given. One does not take by way of theft the wealth or property of others, neither in the village nor in the forest. 3. Abandoning abuse 
of sensual pleasures. One gives up misuse in sensual pleasures. One does not have sexual intercourse with partners who are protected by their mother or father or brother or sister or relatives or partners who is married or who is betrothed to another partner who are protected by law who are underage a minor who are in prison or who are engaged to other side that is how there are three kinds of advantageous bodily moral behavior. That is in good and fine, sweet harmony with the true Dhamma. Such fine behavior is right action. For further study on Buddhist right action, Samma Kamanta, go to whatbuddhasit.net and search for what is right action. Thank you for your attention, consideration, and have a nice day. So you could have Buddhist people as marketeers, you can have Christians as marketeers, you can have any religious person, hmm. but religion don't come into marketing. No, no. A, a different set of hmm. elements. So because one day we are governed by this and we've been told that everything has to be afforded mm. you have to afford everything mm. so to afford everything we have to work we have to earn and we have to be uh, uh, earn as much as your peers uh, and friends yeah but be frugal with what you earn mm. and spend only what you can afford mm. is, is what has been said to us in our mm. ethical moral Education. Education. Yeah. So in that one day, we also had this thing hmm. where our ego wants to compare with other people and just feel that I have a better choice. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah? Hmm. I, my choice is better. Yeah. So, Therefore, I am better. Yeah. So that <laughs> natural something one day is feeding me in the background, right? And I do not know how to withdraw myself in this conventional world, in this world outside, from this little thing that I've started and don't know where to finish it, where to end it. So, if you go to school, parenting, is that all guardians and parents expect children to be the best, mm. to be the first. Mm. But there's only one person who can be the first. Mm. Everybody else who's encouraged to be the first, who doesn't become first. They become dissatisfied. True. And their parents too. Yeah, but, yeah. but we don't see it that way. We say, yeah. okay, to try again, try the next time. Mm, mm, mm. And, and suddenly within 12 years, it's all finished. Mm, mm. And you've never been the first. Mm. But those who have been the first are happy to be here the first. If they were beaten again, they're angry that they were beaten. Mm. So life is one day. There's a lot of emotionally uh, uh, aroused transactions mm. going on. Comparativeness. Unnecessary. Yeah, yeah, and completely. That, that is causing such uh, turmoil mm. in people. Suffering, exactly. frustration. Fr exa exhausted, ex ex exerted exertions. Mm. Yeah? Schooling, when you remember that you couldn't accomplish, you're sad. Mm. When you have accomplished, you're happy. Mm. When you accomplished and didn't ma maintain it, you're mm. unhappy. Mm. So, in that way, there is no one thing to us. Mm. Each person in their skills, in their effort, in their ability have accomplished something and karmically gathered something to become, to behave in a way. So that if by any chance in school a classmate beats you being the first in class, maybe that when they get to the conventional world in working mm. and they meet that friend somewhere, they will somehow try to take revenge in their own way. Mm -hmm. yeah? So mm. in this way, but they did this. only when you come into this monkhood, you begin to expose some of these exhaustions you had. Mm -hmm. And to, because you are, you have the space to avoid it. Mm. Yeah? You have the permission. There's no competitiveness. huh? You don't compare with other monks in the same sense. So true. Though uh, big places where there are many monks together, there, there can be some comparison. But in the case one stays alone 
then uh, there's nothing to compare with, uh, basically. Yeah? So true, one day. Yeah? Some, some in this institution, one day, are caught up in this uh, media hmm. with talks, uh, the, the viewing figures and hmm. hit rates and hmm. all the things that these systems, the social media brings, they're hmm. caught on. Hmm. Those that are caught on just have to learn how to undo it in a way. Hmm. But what, what this one says is that one day, when you come here and identify that you have come from that exhausted way and you've taken a time out, hmm. you get the space to breathe a bit hmm. and also investigate it why you were tired then, hmm. Hmm. spending 24 hours, hmm. when you're still spending 24 hours, hmm. but you don't have to do many things you did. No, no, no. You don't no. have to be compared with those that no, are... No, no. Yeah. So, in this way, one day, society is still been driven blindly in a very deluded nature to even get more exhausted today. Mm. So we were talking last week one day what we could what we have to offer these people. Have this society, this bigger world, right, space to get some breather, to get it some time out. Mm. Yes this is the answer. Mm. And one of the things we didn't cover last time one day is that this one day says many individuals have taken up this role play as a solution to overcome loneliness. Mm. Okay? And they've exaggerated the roles they're playing, okay? thinking that it will become a, a much uh, better solution. Mm. Exaggeration. So this, I think, is uh, for me to, to go forth or to come in contact with the Dhamma to see that this whole social convention, the idea that, for example, at what if you get, uh, if you go wildly into consumerism and can buy the best of the best, what advertisement says, then you will be happy. No, you will not be happy. <laughs> if you get the best education, then you will be happy. No, you will not be happy. If you have the best uh, apartment or villa or whatever, then you will be uh, lastingly happy. No, you will not be lastingly happy. They're suffering in all these positions. Huh? So the whole idea, the whole social convention, that is fed to us, and as you say, on many planes, in many situations, this competitiveness that it leads to, uh, this whole idea is actually fake or is false. It does not lead to lasting happiness. And it does lead to competitiveness, to comparison. It does lead to exhaustion because you start to run faster and faster and faster to be on the top of the game. Huh? So it's, it's, uh, it's actually untrue. Though it's really the idea of the Western world, but you can say it's the same, it's also the same on Sri Lanka everywhere, huh? It's never, it's never completely uh, outspoken, but it's kind of like a subconscious or non-spoken truth that if you do like the social convention says you should do, like your mother and father expect, and the society says you should do, advertisement says you should do, then you become happy. This whole idea is false. Yes. <laughs> yes. So to discover that, this is to say, ah, okay, if this is false, uh, then you have to do something else. There, there has to be something else out there. And then actually, automatically, one, one says, ah, if, if, if this is dukkha, if this is suffering, if this is dissatisfaction, then is there anything else? And, and truly, I think it's a good news. Yes, there is something else. There is this Nibbana. Huh? So uh, there, is this, there is something else. Otherwise, there will be no escape. Yeah. And then I think ho the whole life is, uh, f the meaning of the whole life, and thereby also the purpose is uh, reformulated. Then it, suddenly it, it's, it, it goes, you go the realistic way, step by step, towards freedom, towards peace, towards the highest happiness towards Nibbana. Yeah. And that makes sense. Right. That makes sense. But then the whole the whole consumer uh, part of it, the whole comparison part of it, and the whole hunting down uh, sense places, it goes it goes poof away. Huh? Yeah. It so, goes poof away. So, so the, 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 the conventional world comes and asks. So there was a, 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 a scenario a couple of days ago when this Pante was asked, you know, is life all what life is this? Or is there something more? There is something more. Yeah, definitely so. Right. So, it is not the fun you've had, but it's something else as fun. Mm. What is that? Well, not doing what you did. Mm. Well, how can that be fun? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it can. I would say the pleasure of it, uh, 
notably because excitement is not there. Excitement is also a little bit stressful, huh? Except, except you, you get something very pleasant, but you say, yuppie, yuppie, yuppie. But uh, if you get something like yuppie, then also quickly it goes away. Huh? Okay. So if, it, it's, if it's very, very, ex excitation is very large, it's very exciting, then also very, very, it's very, very unstable. Quickly it disappears. Yeah. But, but the joy with the Dhamma, the joy with Bhavana, meditation, the, the joy with understanding, the joy with having the right purpose, the right livelihood, this doesn't go away easily. It's something on the stream that is with one for, for life, basically, huh? for life. Okay. So, now, even when you invite somebody to come to a retreat with us, mm. take a break from your social world, take a break from this choice, take a break from this monotonous thing. One thing that we can't stop is their competition continuing. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so, whomever they compared with, whomever they competed with, they will keep on. They will keep no, on. No. And you are stopping. No, no. So the moment you look aside in a way, when that competition is continuing, this mind doesn't allow, this craving that I have to gather more than them mm. doesn't stop. Mm. So the social world has to be shown something more than just a story of what this dukkha is and the solution to this dukkha. Right? So what this Panti talks in a way has seen is this word called because. B-E-C-A-U-S-E. -E. Mm. Everything that this self is about is a because. Mm. You ask any question with the word why. Why did you do this? Why did you take this? Why did you, you know, give this? Doesn't matter what the transaction is with the why. That answer is always begun with the annotated because mm. with the cause mm. because 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 mm. justified by yourself true only to you yeah caused by you so when you start saying that am i the cause of all what i've experienced mm. yes but then why have I been blaming the rest of the world for all this up to now? <laughs> <laughs> I would say, if there is a creator, uh, then it must be craving. Huh? Uh, ignorance and craving is, is, is creating. Yeah. And what are they creating? Yes, basically they are creating suffering. One doesn't see that. Uh, but uh, as soon as there is this ignorance of the Four Noble Truth, uh, which we have agreed to discuss today, and then th this craving is there, the right. second noble truth. Well, then you are creating suffering. Right. It might look like blue, or it might look like a uh, heaven. It might look like a continuation of pleasure, but still, it is suffering. Huh? Exactly. Uh, as soon as you begin it, uh, you, as you say, then you also have to end it. Yeah. Huh? So, but we have been falsely or deludedly brought to this situation, Bande, that gather and have and. It's good. Mm, mm. You are measured by part, measured by what you gather. Yeah, your accumulation. Exactly. Mm. Right? Uh, accomplishments of statuses. Mm. Right? Many things that bring pride in another. Mm. You're encouraged with. Mm. Yeah? Mm, mm. Now, having to maintain all these things you gathered from the day you gathered, what you gathered, what you owned, is subjected to impermanence, where the time it's spending is increasing, causing aging, causing decay, causing change, causing this uh, deprivation inside you. Where the time it's got left to exist is reducing. How do you change this one thing? <laughs> yes. right? you, I think you can change it by seeing it. So, so if you accumulate it, and this is what you accumulate is basically joy or satisfaction that is impermanent, that is vanishing, as you say, by itself. Huh? Yeah. It's a, it's a vaya dhamma. It's of a nature to vanish, to evaporate. And the time it has left becoming less and less. Then I think it's easy to see, okay, I thought it was pleasure I was accumulating. But really, it is pain, it is suffering, it is frustration. Because it always changes. And it becomes less and less and less. And I cannot keep it. I cannot keep so, it. From a dhamma point of view... What we are living now, knowing the four noble truths, knowing the solutions the Buddha has offered us, as to what you just explained. Mm. But to go back to the conventional world of the poor people that are still not knowing 
how to absorb the dhamma to fix their problems. They have been told one day that if something is aging, mm. some things that age is good. Mm. They become antiques. Mm. So you increase the value, you increase its uh, importances, and you give it a new name, and then you are it's it, it's now a, a, a differently measurable component. Mm. Or you give it maturity, mm. something to do with sentiment, virtue. So there are social words that make aging a better thing to happen. Mm. Yeah? Mm. So therefore, collecting something and making it, uh, you know, get a car, mm. keep it for 25 years. Mm. Well, now you have an old antique. Mm. It, it's a good car. Mm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Huh? Yeah. But it's a rotting piece of metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. It has a value. It uh, has a market uh, value. Uh. So, Banjo, the measuring process that this society has been given today is so false. But they are lost in it and they are unable to take the message we give. Mm, mm, to disentangle. Exactly, Banjo. Mm. So, there you have to have some fortune. You have to have something more than the intelligence they possess at the moment mm. for them to take this wisdom and apply it in a situation to reduce this exhaustion they are going through. Mm, 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 yeah? mm. So, this is what this Pante has been always trying to work out. How to uh, not to bring everybody he meets into this journey of Mankod or Upasaka. No, no, no. Not mm. really. You don't just learn to stop exaggerating this life of yours. Mm. Stop intensifying these transactions you are participating with. Mm. Right? Screwing down, not screwing up. Yes. Ah, yes. Just, 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 Simplifying. It's okay for others to have and for you not to, it's okay. Mm. Mm. And just because other people have accomplished these things doesn't mean you have to have the same thing. Mm. Understand that for other people to have accomplished what they've accomplished, they have to exert themselves, exhaust themselves, spend money, spend time, right? Mm. Just knowing it, that it is trouble. They have gone through a lot of trouble yeah. in order to do it. Know that experience right. and say, I don't need this. Mm. It's okay. Mm. If somebody has walked up, climbed up Mount Everest mm. and narrowly escape their death to come back down to tell us something. Mm. Just take the pictures, photographs, see it and be enjoyed. Don't try to walk up there. No, no need, <laughs> no need, no need, no need. However, I think uh, um, looking at f backing out very, on a very large scale, so this samsara has been endless. huh? So we have been fooled by this diversity and this social convention that you could find lasting happiness in samsara for for. A, a, uncountable number of, of times. I think this is, uh, it takes some maturity to come to the end of it and to see, uh, and to probably by help by this boredom and see, ah, okay, uh, this was looked very, very colorful in the start, very, very captivating in the start, but now this is also boring. This is also leading to suffering. I think this eventually will lead to that one takes up the path a little, a little further uh, or a little before. I think actually it is a suffering, it's a dukkha that, though it's, it's, it's experienced as frustration, it is it's the very thing that pushes you into faith, mm -hmm. that gives you satta. Ah, there must be something about this path, there must be something about this Buddhist, since they were brought to the forest, they could have cars, they could be doctors and engineers, but still they back out of it. They back out of it. Why do they back out of it? Huh? It's a mystery. Until you yourself say, ah, okay, I can, I can use something else than this running in circles that is very, very narrow, beginning this and that, uh, maintaining this and that, accumulating this and that, thinking but uh, knowing very well in the back of my mind, ah, this is not lasting suffering. I can enjoy it now, but I have to pay something to, to maintain it and to keep it in existence. Huh? Yeah. Also, if you think about uh, uh, Mahamogayana and Sariputta, where then they went forth, they were in a, some kind of show. You remember, it was one week show, huh? Uh, and they came the first day was okay. They saw some some uh, acrobats and something uh, some colorful things and then but and then the third day they 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 kind of like Despite they were youngsters and there were a lot of youngsters in in their in their milieu that didn't uh, s s Get bored they got bored huh? and they asked his uh, Asari Buddha, 
why uh, you look a little bit yes he said she, i i'm in doubt whether we should we should give up this and then go into the noble life and find lasting happiness huh and why you mogoyana you also look a little bit dull yes he said this is the same for me and i think this is a if you look from a very large scale then this that you 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 think samsara is dull even though it you're presented for the most colorful aspects this is a, it's a sign of spiritual maturity huh? so to, you can see if you see the dukkha you see the suffering you see the frustration easily though it's not fun then is the, the the good the good thing about it is that it's a sign indirect sign of spiritual maturity that you probably have a more easy path going forth reducing uh, this need this craving and thereby gain freedom than compared to others that, that that are still engaging in it to the full sense huh? i wondered uh, many times i thought ah now you become a buddhist so all my family will become a buddhist and all my friends they will also become a buddhist but no they did not <laughs> they did not and uh, in the beginning i was disappointed but then i realized ah yes but uh, uh, maybe you are the fortunate one in the sense that you have gone this path before and they have not yet gone it or if they have gone it then they have forgotten it they are still hooked on samsara they cannot they cannot let it go huh? okay. they are still addicted yeah. uh, so uh, it's not up to it's not only the, if you have come into company with a buddhist or not it's also your own propensities how addicted you are habitually uh, and have been for many 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 lives that is expressing the, your chance for becoming a buddhist or not or to to seek another path or not huh? mm. So uh, many uh, the hedonist and uh, the western hedonist he would say any kind of withdrawal which is right motivation huh sama sankappa any kind of withdrawal with back from this entanglement in diversity of uh, sex drugs and rock and roll that is crazy huh why why should you withdraw no no the whole purpose is to dive even further into it <laughs> and to accumulate even more of it and to find even more diverse or extreme uh, cases of sense pleasure Uh, so for in in this sense often what buddhists do comes to look at at the first glance but not at the last glance it comes to look at as something crazy to withdraw from sense pleasure huh? to withdraw to the forest uh, to withdraw to to a less complicated life is 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 say no 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 you should go you should you should go the opposite way you should you should t- jack it up huh yes but then uh, the buddhists will say ah what you're jacking up is really suffering it is exhaustion huh? yeah. exhaustion so, but, but then if you speak to some of the people who intoxicate themselves with intoxicate with pleasure with yeah. drugs yeah. with alcohol with you know doing entertainment things, entertainment gambling so yeah. whatever the intoxication that they are going through right you ask them why are you doing this hmm most of the time majority of the time the answer is that they have nothing else better to do hmm they, they they but i think the most of them will uh they they will excuse themselves by saying ah it is what makes me happy yeah uh, they will know okay it's only short term happiness because i have to repeat it all the time this is uh, silly behavioral patterns but nevertheless they make i get a small glimpse of happiness uh, and pleasure satisfaction and so i keep repeating that same thing i got uh, pleasure and happiness right. from last right. Many people take up drugs. One is the when you consume it, when you in, in, indulge in it, there is this happiness. Mm. But after the indulgence, the duration that they have, the effect of what they've done is longer. Mm. So they live in a state of numbness mm. for a long time. Mm. Emotional flatness. Yeah. So yeah. they are they don't have to deal with what society is throwing at them mm. because they are just intoxicated mm. they're lost mm. so they take some you know heroin or whatever drug and 10 12 15 24 hours it's killed mm. it's got rid of mm. so this is also seen one day by many as a way as a solution to deal with time mm. with killing the time will boredom well the the boredom that comes with it so mm. one is that short term indulgence brings happiness knowing that the effect of this is longer mm. and i don't have to deal with many things i don't have to go find two more meals mm. i can sleep over those 
two meals. Mm, mm. Yeah, so I don't have to afford this. So I afford one injection here, so I can you know come out there. Then mm. I'm going to find the next injection there. Mm. So like this, but they they are so because this, this, this in a way this entertainment to them with this drug have become a pastime. It's a pastime, mm. to spend time, mm. and there is nobody in society who is able to take these people and find out what they are trying to hide from, what, what, what problems they are trying to face. And the, uh, the word upaklesa, the, the sub-defilements that we gather, mm. jealousy, uh, with covetousness, uh, with the hatrednesses, no, envy, envy. Nah. nobody stands up to help somebody to fix whatever that is broken in their lives. Mm, 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 right? mm. So some people don't want to go and stand in front of or sit in front of a psychiatric uh, or, or, or a psychologist or whoever or a monk to, to, or a monk to assess their past. Mm. They don't want to see it. Mm. So the best thing to do is to kill the immediate future. Mm. Drug themselves out. Mm. Just get along and spend 24 hours if you can. Mm. Drug yourself, get along with it. Mm. Chemical calm. Ch chemical calm. Mm. So, this way one day, it is such a disheartening circumstances to see young children from such good, beautiful backgrounds having such a future, such a fortunate nature for them to see the Dhamma. Mm. But the circumstances have taken them even deeper and deeper into the darkness mm. in society. Mm. Mm. True, true. Yeah? Uh, they, they, unfortunately, this also is coming. Uh, it's not maybe heroin, but this also is a, a, a social convention, huh? Now there's this ecstasy. Uh, there's many uh, tablets you can take: LSD derivatives, uh, pot, uh, hashish, ganja, uh, which is becoming legal more and more places. So this also becomes a social convention. One doesn't see that it usually takes 24 years for for the drug addict person to come out of the drugs and then. Uh, usually as a reduced person because it's difficult to learn something huh? how can you go to school how can you learn the Dhamma when you're drugged it's impossible huh? Mm. another thing uh, one doesn't see the social convention is that it said that that uh, the karmic cause of insanity of being unhinged actually is that you have used drugs in the past huh? yeah. so yeah. not only are you unhinging yourself uh, making yourself crazy now in the, in the present moment but you're also uh, jagging up the chance of becoming seriously crazy like schizophrenia in the future uh, by uh, using drugs, by deranging the mind, by making the mind unnatural uh, in whatever sense. And I think this is worth uh, noticing and knowing. Uh, uh, well, it seems so innocent now to, to also to drink wine, for example. Here in Denmark, it's, it's very, very modern. Uh, but uh, even though it's only a little, yes, but then you only become a little crazy. Who wants to become a little crazy? Huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, little crazy, it means, can, can be felt as confusion, uh, uncertainty, being unable to discriminate, being unable to know things as they really are, and therefore being unable to make the right choice. Uh, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. Right. But that is a consequence, a common consequence of intoxicating with these kinds of drugs. Huh? Right. In whatever extent and in whatever, uh, of whatever use, the natural mind, I think the Buddha put it, so don't affect the mind. Yeah. Make it natural. Huh? Uh, and this I uh, often get as a question, uh, can you smoke, uh, can you make your spiritual heights by taking uh, mushrooms or LSD or... Uh, smoking ganja or whatever and the answer is a clearly no you cannot why not because you lose more in clarity that you gain by whatever it, whether it's a speedy mind of, of cocaine or something or of calm mind with alcohol or pot you you become unclear so your ignorance is growing exponentially and the whole purpose of uh, meditation is actually the opposite it is one's ignorance to diminish and one's understanding of things as they really are, this should increase. Huh? It's not going to go down. Huh? But while sitting there in this intoxication, one can spin up a lot of delusions and they're very colorful and say, ah, now I'm very, very holy. I'm, I'm enlightened. I'm even better than the Buddha <laughs> or something like that. Why one falls asleep usually five minutes after. Huh? But it's a whole, it's a whole, a whole illusion. You, 
you, you cannot hippie your way uh, to Nirvana, basically. Yes. It's impossible. It's basically impossible. So, uh, though it may be modern and, and cultural uh, feature of Hinduism, it is not of Buddhism, not of early Buddhism. And uh, one should realize that. And this is again to, back to this sila, this morality, this purity. There is some beginnings that one has to kind of like make this clean first. And that can be difficult even. In the usual, in the Danish setting, for example, to take the five precepts, it's easy for people to say, ah, I can abstain from killing and also stealing and also sexual abuse. And I even can try stop lying and scolding and uh, divisive speech, uh, slandering others, uh, talking about others. And I can also, empty speech, I can also reduce that. But what they cannot reduce is find very easily is to give up alcohol. This is very few can, can say, ah, now I, I go all in and then uh, ditch all these intoxicants. But I think this is necessary. This is necessary because otherwise you won't get any success with the spiritual path. Okay. Huh? Okay. You get frustrated. It's like to say, oh, I want to build a house and it has to have a high, it has to have a high tower. Uh, then uh, the Western Buddhist usually tends to build the tower first. While actually you should build, build the foundation of the basement first. And that is actually this purity of morality, which then make innocence, which then make the joy of innocence, the gladness of innocence. When there's gladness and innocence, then there's satisfaction. When there's satisfied, the satisfied mind becomes calm. When there's this calmness, then there's also focus, there's also concentration. When there's concentration, then one will come to see reality as, as it really is. There's understanding. When there's understanding, then one sees, ah, this is really suffering. This is really dukkha. All this is samsara is dukkha. Seeing this, the, the mind becomes this passion towards it, and then it gives up. It gives it up. It relinquishes the object, whatever object it is. It can be one's own body, other sexual objects, others' body. It can be uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, or status symbols like houses, cars, jobs, social positions in the external world. But it will. It gives it up because it sees ah, this also is not lasting. This also is suffering. This also is not me, not mine, not what I am not what I'm made of. And this is freedom. This is therefore leading to peace, leading to relinquishment, leading to uh, Nibbana, basically. Mm. So it starts with something that is, seems to be very simple, uh, but in the practical sense, it's not so simple for many beings. Then it ends up by this gradual uh, causation uh, with something that is very subtle, that is mental release, relinquishment, basically that one gives it up. This is felt as, why, is, does, it, uh, why does it become into joy and happiness and calm? Because when you feel you need less, you don't feel you need anything. Uh, it's particularly easy to feel in the forest when you have partaken of your meal in the morning, when you're gone, then you know there is no more food this day. Huh? There is no more food. Then you don't need food because there is no more food. So the rest of it you will give to the dog or to the poor. So there is no, there is no fridge. There's no nothing. Then you don't need it after a while, basically because there is not, there is no choice, as you say, yeah. to take more feed, more food. You you're not allowed to go into the village again and ask for food. They say, ah, why do you come twice uh, this day? Huh? And there's no uh, there's no shops. There's only this forest. Then it's easy to feel the peace of there's no need. When there's no need, basically that is what we call the the, the third noble truth. This is absence of craving. So the first noble truth, now we are into this, uh, the theme is, is uh, all this is suffering. It is, it's this exhaustion. It is, it is dissatisfaction. It is frustration. It is stress. All this, whether internal, external, past, present, or future, whether fine or foul, whether near or far away, uh, whether in, in this moment or in any future, it is only this dukkha, bad state. So seeing this first noble truth, one starts to speak, ah, how, how does it come? How does it come into being? Ah, it's because of craving. It's because this mind wants it. It wants to have something to choose from. It wants to have to something to be satisfied with. And it, if it had this time, this thing a hundred times, then it needs something new for the hundred one time. It cannot be satisfied with the same thing a hundred two times. It, it becomes dissatisfied already at the third time. So thereby this diversification, this chooses, they accumulate. It has to have more and more to choose from. And this means craving, craving for, for the sense object, 
whether it's to see something, hear something, smell something, taste something, touch something, or feel something with your mental states like orgasm, for example, or drug states like being drunk or high. This, this is basically endless because there has to be something new and captivating about this object that you are sensing. So you can never be satisfied with the same object. That's just an impossibility. So craving goes up. When craving goes up because it's the cause of suffering, suffering also goes up. Then the third noble truth is lying right there. Ah, if craving is the cause of suffering, then absence of craving, no craving, must be the end of suffering. This is third noble truth. If there's no craving, there's no suffering. Huh? You don't want this. <laughs> you don't want that. You don't want this body. You don't want this future. You don't want to become this. You don't want to become that. You, you are, it's okay if you don't become this. And it's also okay if you don't become that. So those, there's no craving for a sense object. There's no bhavatana craving for becoming this and that. And there's no vibhavatana. There's no craving for not becoming this and that. It's okay to be sick. It's even okay to become dead. <laughs> because for the Arahant, for example, who has finished a job, then uh, the dying state is uh, his entry to Nibbana. Uh, Anubhati says that Nibbana without traces of clinging left. So there is the ultimate, uh, is the ultimate uh, climax of his whole samsaric career. So just imagine what the, the normal commoner, what we call the Pujujana, the ordinary being, is running away from, namely death in most cases. This the other hand looks completely different. Uh, this is his entry. This is the climax of his whole samsaric ca career. All the lives he have had. All the noble, uh, all the noble work he's done as a monk, as a disciple, this is now culminating. This is now becoming the highest happiness, nibbana, paranang sukkang, as the Buddha say. Nibbana is the highest happiness. So this is what we have, and all other beings, our, our we also we are looking for this happiness, <laughs> but he have known it for a long time. We also know it, but the normal case is that we don't know it. We think that something happiness that doesn't last. This is real happiness. No, this is not. Happiness that doesn't last is also suffering. Why so? Because when happiness comes, then you feel it's as agreeable. You like it. Uh, also, when it stays there, then you also like it. It's agreeable. But as soon as the happiness starts to go down, then it's subjectively felt as frustration. Huh? That the intensity of the satisfaction goes down. Then you, you want to have no more uh, sensation. You take a new spoon of uh, soft eyes, or you have to find a new lover or you have to buy a new car, or you find a new job. Uh, so, so as soon as this reduction is, goes down because of impermanence, naturally, huh? inherently, then it's felt as, as suffering. So it is also suffering. The start is happiness, yes, but uh, conventional happiness that is impermanent is at the end uh, unhappiness. Okay, then how to reach the end of suffering? How, 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 how to come to this absence of craving? That's why we have spoken about this Noble Eightfold Way, uh, which starts with right view. Uh, could we speak a little bit, Bente? I think because this is often a naughty point for most beings. What is right view, Samadhiti? Okay. Uh, the right view that one should have is the view of the Four Noble Truths. So, if you understand that this existence is all about this exhaustion we just spoke about, that it has this naturality that then gets caused, that this, if you change the causation as a solution, that the fixation happens and the fixation is associated with the equal part in that way. In the same way, one day there are certain very basic realizations that we, the, 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 the people need to have to see the Four Noble Truths. And that is that, that if you look at all life and take just the physicalities of the physical human life and the animal life everything that we can see to our eye that is born has to spend time till it dies where it does it how it does it's down to that animal or that being mm. of the human yeah? mm. so now is my problem having to spend time and in a way, yes, mm, mm. because the question should get asked, am I spending time in the right way? Mm. Because if I spend that time in the right way, I can't be this tired. Mm. Mm. I can't be tired. Mm, no, true. No. So, so 
then you begin to see how exhausted animals are. Yeah, many animals get eaten by any other animals, so they have to be at their wits all the time not to get eaten by another. Mm. Right. So in that way, every different life form, whether it's in the uh, devas, whether it's in the hells, whether it's in this physical life that we know of, when you look at it. You begin to see how uneconomical each one of us are in spending our time. Mm. We think that we are economical, and this one they ask us: In your own view, do you think that you are doing the right job? Mm. Yes. Mm. Well, why don't you do a job so you get you can earn, uh, you know? Thousand krona a hour, or ten thousand. Ten thousand krona a hour. Why huh? are you only doing something for hundred krona? Hmm. 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 So, when you begin to start questioning yourself in this way, one day there is something that actually happens inside you. Is life all about having to spend, spend time? Hmm. Hmm. But you can say you'll have to spend time as soon as you are you're given birth. Then uh, inherently you have to spend time. Huh? Isn't this good? Uh, 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 sure, sure thing. Yeah. So when you begin to start seeing something in this simplest of ways, one day hmm. you begin to see that not only that I have to wait, spend time, I also have to be a provider for those who depend on me. Hmm. So the the view that you should have today is providing. How exhausting is providing. Hmm. So, from a spiritual point of view, seeing the four noble truths in a social life is one thing. It's it's right view. It's right. From a social point of view, they should also understand their exhaustion. This Pante says, just ask yourself a question, right, and state this statement in this way: I do, I do, I do, I do. It doesn't matter how much I do. Others don't seem to be happy with what I have done. Mm. They've taken me for granted, mm. and this extra care, consideration I make is rarely appreciated. Mm. And I do not know when this is to end. Mm. Right? Mm. So now, how did I get to this situation? How how did I end up here? Yeah. Who ordered this truckload of dung? Exactly. Yeah. So the view, the right view. In the conventional world, that they should have is at least the simplistic of this analysis that they can make mm. as to how they got to where they are. Mm. From where they are to get to a point where they are not exhausted one day, that's the time now they need the dharma, that they need to see this dukkha. That if you begin, it only appears. If it doesn't begin, there's nothing to be here, mm. right? Because it hasn't begun. So, but if it begins. It's subject to impermanence. It's subject to the, the the aging and the decay and the cycles of. You get the whole gamut. Oh, oh no, the totality no. that you spoke about. No. So now, not only that, we also have this freedom. We spoke about choice. Mm. So the right view, Bante, is to have this simplicity that if I choose, and what I choose as what I like, I need and want. If I don't get it at the time I want, the way I want, right? I am unhappy. Hmm. So to maintain my happiness, pleasantnesses, with what I have to choose from, if I choose it in this category, I'm in trouble. If I choose it in another category of dislike, I'm in trouble again because I have to live with what I dislike. Hmm. So where am I a winner? Hmm. <laughs> where yeah. am I a winner? There is only nibbana as a winning state. So, so, so uh. Bante, saying it is one thing for us now. Uh. Giving this. Poor people in this society who are going through this exhaustion. That ask yourself a question, right? What is to win? Mm. To have is it winning? Not having is winning. Mm. And the wise will say it. Mm. The view will be present. Mm. That, that's a good experience. So this is you can say right view. I think one easy way of uh, of, of, of 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 remembering it is that. Right view of the Four Noble Truth is this definitely an article of right view. We say then also classically that right view is also of the law of karma. So the law of karma basically can be stated like this: so, so all beings, the Buddha say, 
are born and created by their karma, by their intentional actions. So they are they are inheritors, owners, and debtors to their actions, to their karma. Whatever they do, whether good or bad, only they will feel the future result. So this is also an important uh, article of right view that you know that whatever you intend, whatever you begin, whatever you begin to say, to think, and to do, then this will affect your future. This will affect your future. This will affect your future and other beings had the same. So one is coming out of a womb of probability, of karma, of past actions. And this we are adding now also, once comes to look at one's other actions in, in another way, because how can you end karma if you keep having choices in the conventional world, which eventually will have results in the future, whether good or bad. Huh? So you're still, you're still circling in samsara. If you're, you're doing something bad, you will circle at low levels. If you're doing something good, you will circle at high levels. But you're still running around, basically. Mm. Then the last uh, article of right view, I think also worth, me worth mentioning, is something called the ten subjects. Mm. And it goes like this, to say there's mother and father. So this means basically that you, you are indebted to your mother and father in a very deep sense because they have given you existence. And this is something that we have lost a little bit in the West, but you still have in the East a very deep respect for mother and father and a felt of gratitude. While in the West, because of Freudian belief, we, uh, one can see many beings, they are blaming their mother and father that they are unhappy. And this is very unfortunate because then you become even more happy, unhappy, because you, you are indebted to your mother and father to the extent that the Buddha say, even if you carry them around for a hundred years on your shoulders, and they urinate and defecate on you, you still owe them something. So, so this is very important, not to, to blame one's mother and father, but to feel gratitude towards them. And this, uh, the Westerners often feel very difficult, while the Easterners have it in their tradition, that it is just so. Not that they have an unproblematic family life, you cannot say, huh? No. Uh, but it's still, it's this, there's a very inherent deep respect for mother and father. By these words, I think we say thank you for today and thank you indeed to Bande Damagavesi. Bande Damagavesi is now going to uh, Australia and will take up his uh, three months VAS retreat there, I guess. Yes. Uh, this is we do every year. We take three months where we're not traveling so much around and to do meditation, uh, an intense period, they're usually very, very rewarding. And uh, so I think we have done these two thoughts and they will come. I think probably as six uh, YouTube videos where we cover a lot of ground. But in this day, I think it was a good thing to go over the core of all Buddhism, the Four Noble Truths, and thereby also the Fourth Truth, the Noble Eightfold Way. And then I'd like to say thank you. Namo, Tasso, Bhagavato, Arahato, Samma Sambuddhasa, worthy, honorable, and perfectly self-enlightened was the Bliss Buddha. And thank you indeed for your advantageous attention, for your clever consideration, and for your kind contribution. And have indeed a nice and noble day, and have indeed a nice and noble life. Thank you, Sadhu. Friends, the Four Noble Truths Chacharya, Arya Sajjani, which is the very core of Buddhism, are 1. All this and such is suffering, Dukkha. 2. Craving is the cause of all suffering, Dukkha Samudaya. Three, absence of all craving is the end of suffering, Dukkha Nirodo. Four, the noble eightfold way leads to the end of suffering, Dukkha Nirodo Kamri Patipada. The noble eightfold way this noble way leading to Nirvana is simply this Radhu Samaditi 
right motivation, samma sankappa, right speech, samma vajja, right action, samma kamanta, right livelihood, samma ajiva, right effort, samma vajjama, right awareness, samma sati, and right concentration, samma samadhi. But what is right speech? What is this imperative right speech? The fourfold definition of right speech is as follows. 1. Avoiding all lying, pretending, and any false speech. 2. Abstaining from any kind of divisive or splitting talk. 3. Refraining from all aggressive or irritated scolding. 4. Stealing of any ill and empty gossiping. That is right speech. The characterization of noble speech is eliminating all false speech any noble friends dwells avoiding all lies he's a true speaker one to be relied upon trustworthy loyal not a deceiver of the world Abstaining from malicious speech, he does not tell them there what he has heard about those here, or repeat here what he have heard over there, harming those there. Thus he is a reconciling diplomat, stealing all quarrels. The noble friend is still rejoicing in peace. Loving peace, delighting in it, and defense peace, abandoning all harsh and aggressive speech, he refrains from it. He speaks whatever is blameless and pleasing to the ear, agreeable, touching the heart, elegant gratifying and appealing to the many. Discarding idle and empty chatter, he speaks at the right time and only about what is correct, advantageous and to the point. He speaks about Dhamma and he speaks about self-control. He is a speaker whose words are to be treasured and remembered, timely, reasoned, well-defined, well-formulated, beneficial, and leading to the goal. This is right and noble speech. For more on right speech, Samavacha, go to whatbuddhasit.net and see under drops what is right speech. And there's also a video called Truth Always Triumph on Bhikkhu Samahita's YouTube channel. Thank you for your attention and have a nice day.